Chapter 4 begins with a door opening in the sky to reveal a fantastic heavenly throne room. John says that immediately he was in spirit, meaning that he had altered his consciousness, allowing him to be instantly present in the throne room. To help us interpret this complex scene, let's focus on some of the specific symbols. First, there is the throne with a rainbow about it. The rainbow has the look of emerald, a gemstone. The one seated on the throne has the look of jasper and sardine stone. Jasper is a transparent stone that can come in a variety of vivid colors. Sardine is a red gemstone from the region of Sardis. The one on the throne is not depicted with any particular features, but only in terms of transcendent brightness. In the right hand of the one seated on the throne is a book sealed with seven seals. The throne is surrounded by four beasts, a calf, a beast with the face of a man, a lion, and an eagle. Actually, in John's vision, each of the beasts have six wings and are full of eyes, signifying the symbolic and mythic nature of these creatures. Seven lamps are burning before the throne, and there is a sea of glass with the appearance of crystal. Crystal imagery plays heavily into John's vision of the throne room. John also saw 24 seated elders dressed in white with crowns of gold. The dramatic sense of the vision is accentuated by lightning and thunder. The beast and elders worship and are submissive to the one on the throne. Edgar Cayce's interpretation of this amazing spectacle is that it represents the anatomy and physiology of our bodies during mystical states such as John was experiencing. Casey declared that the book in the right hand of the one on the throne symbolizes the human body. The fact that it is sealed indicates that specific patterns of memory and energy are encoded into our biology. At a physical level, these spiritual centers are embodied in the primary endocrine glands and the corresponding sympathetic nerve ganglia along the spine as symbolized by the book that is written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Casey said that the energy patterns associated with these centers form a spectrum of vibration much as we find in the electromagnetic spectrum. Hence the centers can be depicted as the colors of the rainbow as I have shown them here. The seven churches and candlesticks that appeared at the beginning of the Revelation also represent the seven spiritual centers. Casey said that the throne room that John envisions is in the brain. The 24 elders symbolize the 24 cranial nerves in the brain. If we turn the brain over, we can see the 12 pair of cranial nerves that come out of the brain stem. I have colored them yellow to make them more visible. One of the primary functions of the cranial nerves is to serve as pathways for the impulses from the sensory organs to the brain. The cranial nerves allow us to hear, taste, smell, and see. They provide us with sensory feedback about our internal physiology, such as how our abdominal organs are working when we digest food. When the sensory system is turned inward, in a psychic sense, we may experience extrasensory perception, or ESP. Edgar Cayce stated that his sensory system operated in that manner when he gave his psychic readings. Presumably this was John's state as he experienced his vision. Throughout the revelation, John experiences powerful sensory phenomena such as voices, sounding of trumpets, earthquakes, and thunder. The visual effects are stunning in their power and scope. I suspect that the powerful experiences associated with sensation and sensuality are a big part of the soul's attraction to the physical body. Keep the sensory system and cranial nerves in mind when we explore Edgar Cayce's cosmology in a later section. It will help us to understand how the soul became entrapped in flesh in the first place. The opening of the door to heaven probably relates to that portion of the brainstem called the reticular activating system. 
This is the area that acts as the gatekeeper or doorman of consciousness, so to speak. It determines whether we are awake or asleep. The shift to altered states of consciousness, such as John was experiencing, would require that this door be open to the unconscious level of experience. Above the brain stem is the limbic system, which is the seat of the emotions. When John speaks of the sea of glass, he is telling us that the emotional centers in this part of the brain are calmed and attuned to the spiritual dimension. I have colored the pituitary gland to make it more apparent. It is suspended from the hypothalamus, an extremely important part of the limbic system. Here is the pineal gland. In adults, it is usually a white calcified crystalline structure in the middle of the brain. These are the two primary glandular centers in the head associated with John's vision. Moving along to the four beasts, we find that they symbolize the four primary carnal forces of the flesh body and the four lower spiritual centers. They are the instinctual urges that we inherit as part of our animal nature. These urges are regulated, to a large extent, by the centers in the brainstem, limbic system, and the pituitary and pineal glands. These are some of the more obvious correlations between the symbols in John's vision and our physical bodies. In fact, Casey noted that almost the whole of John's revelation could be interpreted in terms of anatomy and physiology. Casey even recommended using Gray's Anatomy textbook as a study guide for the revelation. He said that the body will interpret the revelation. For those interested in more information on the physiological dimensions of the revelation with regard to the body-soul connection, I recommend viewing a video of a lecture that I have made available titled House of Clay. When analyzed at a biological level, the revelation is essentially consistent with the latest breakthroughs in the neuroscience of consciousness and the brain. But the revelation goes far beyond biology. According to Casey, understanding the anatomy and physiology of mystical states is very practical. The nervous system, as symbolized by the 24 elders and the 24 cranial nerves, must be focused inward in an introspective manner during deep meditation for full spiritual attunement to be achieved. Traditionally, there are two approaches for dealing with the senses. The ascetic approach is the more extreme. It involves denying the senses, of starving them into submission, as it were. The other approach is to redirect the senses by using sensory experience as a focus. The aroma of incense or fragrant oils can attune the sense of smell. Ringing bells or music attunes our hearing. Gazing intently at a mandala focuses sight, and so on. These two approaches can be integrated by practicing moderation and living a virtuous lifestyle in combination with using the simple sensory-oriented aids to meditation. This will also help in keeping the beasts in submission.